So Peter Dinklage is a Hollywood actor and uh, a little person, a person of short stature, an individual of less than average height, a human of smaller persuasion. I'm not sure what the politically correct term is these days. I think dwarf is still okay, though for some reason midget has been thrown out. In any case, uh, you, you can choose which label makes you feel the most comfortable. What matters today is that Dinklage is bravely speaking out against the woke Snow White remake currently in the works over at Disney, although his complaint is that it's not nearly woke enough, obviously. Now, as we know, Disney has been diligently focused on ripping off, degrading, mutating, mutilating, destroying all of their own classics, and not just their classics either. Even their middle-tier cartoons like uh, the Aristocats have been placed on the docket for remakes. In this case, a live-action remake, I'm told. It's not exactly clear how, how a movie about talking cats could be live action, but, you know, that's neither here nor there. Snow White is a little bit easier to reimagine in that format and to woke So the new version will feature Disney's first Latina, excuse me, Latinx Disney princess. Uh, the non-white princess will play a character who is named Snow White, literally because, according to the original fairy tale, her skin is white as snow. Now, recasting a character like this with a non-white actress it, it's like recasting Black Panther with Chris Pat, Pratt in the, in the lead role. Of course, if Disney did something like that, there would be riots in the street. Al Sharpton would rappel down from a helicopter and hold a press conference denouncing them. It would be unthinkably offensive to cast a white actor in a traditionally non-white role, whereas it is unthinkably offensive to complain about the reverse happening. Those are the rules. And yet none of this is enough to satisfy Peter Dinklage who took some time on Mark Maron's uh, WTF podcast to complain about the insufficient wokeness of Disney's woke Snow White. Let's listen. I was a little taken back by the very, very, they're very proud to cast a, a Latino actress as Snow White. Yeah. But you're still telling the story of Snow still White. Snow White, and yeah. Seven Dwarves. Sure. So. Look, take, take a step back and look at what you're doing there. It makes no sense to me. But, oh, so what, you can what, be, you're progressive in one way, and then but you're still making that oh, backward oh, story of back. seven dwarves <laughs> living in a cave. To get, what the f- are you doing, man? We, you know, have yeah, I yeah. have I done nothing to advance the cause <laughs> from my soapbox? I guess I'm not loud enough. Uh, I don't know what studio, I don't so, know what studio that is, but they, but it was they were so proud of that, and all love and respect to the to the actress and to uh, the people who thought they were doing the right thing. But I'm just like, dude, you don't. What are you doing? There we go. Snow White is offensive to dwarfs. Now the film, uh, I guess I don't know. The film commits some literal microaggressions, you might say. Though it must be noted that contrary to Dinklage's claims, the dwarves in Snow White. They don't live in a cave, first of all. They live in a charming cabin in the woods. They work in a cave, which is actually a mine, where they apparently discovered a rather lucrative mineral deposit. And they enjoy mining those resources, which is why they whistle while they work. But perhaps more to the point, the dwarves in fairy tales like Snow White, just like the dwarves in fantasy stories like The Lord of the Rings, are not disabled humans who suffer from dwarfism. They're mythical creatures. They're like leprechauns or elves in these stories. If you're going to be offended by mythical characters because of a vague physical resemblance, then Brian Stelter should be offended by Humpty Dumpty. Nancy Pelosi should be offended by Corella DeVille. Bill de Blasio should be offended by the Muppets. But you don't see them complaining. Well, you do see them complaining, just not about that. Well, uh, one thing I can tell you as a four-star chef myself, um, amateur chef, but I consider myself a four-star chef, your, your kitchen is not complete without great kitchen knives. And that's why you need Kamikoto. Kamikoto taps into more than 800 years of traditional techniques from Honshu, Japan. Kamikoto also uses steel sourced from mills in Japan, and each blade is crafted using techniques that have been honed and perfected by generations of knife smiths. Each knife comes in a beautiful, heavy-duty ash wood box and makes sure that the knife is stored safely as well. Each Kamikoto knife goes through a rigorous 19-step process that takes several years from start to finish to complete. Our expert bladesmiths forge and shape raw steel into hardy blades, uh, polishing and sharpening them to an excruciatingly fine edge. Each knife is individually inspected. Kamikoto is so confident that their knives will work for you that each knife comes with a lifetime guarantee. Because of their single bevel edge, Kamikoto knives can achieve an unbelievably sharp edge you just can't get with other knives. They can cut through your ribeye like butter. That is guaranteed. Uh, Kamikoto is currently having a massive extended New Year sale, and on top of that sale, you can get an additional $50, $50 off any purchase you make with discount code Matt Walsh. So click the link below or go to kamikoto.com slash Matt Walsh and use promo code Matt Walsh to save an extra $50 today. Now, this is all to say nothing of the fact that Dinklage 
has already played mythical dwarves in films many times. He also appeared in the movie Elf for just one scene, where the whole joke was that Will Ferrell's character thought he was an elf from the North Pole. Now, this kind of moral hypocrisy is, of course, quite common among the woke, especially the older woke, many of whom just decided recently to adopt this stance over the past like five years after a lifetime of relative sanity. They've now decided that they could act a certain way and do certain things and make certain jokes and indulge in certain stereotypes and make money in certain ways, but nobody else is allowed to do it. Their views have evolved, and now they have no patience for anyone who fails to evolve along with them. People who carry on exactly as they did just 12 seconds ago are persona non grata. I mean, what if there were younger dwarfs, like Dinklage once was, who were looking forward to the Snow White remake because it would be their chance to break into the film industry, just as he did? Sorry, says Dinklage, that path was open to him, but it now has to be closed to everybody else. He's drawing up the bridge behind him. No one else, sorry, pulling up the ladder. He was the last one through the door and he's locking it behind him. And then he's turning around, staring out the window and sneering at everybody still stuck outside. And it looks like he'll get his way. The Hollywood Reporter has a Disney statement about all this. Quote, to avoid reinforcing stereotypes from the original animated film, we're taking a different approach with these seven characters and have been consulting with members of the dwarfism community. We look forward to sharing more as the film heads into production after a lengthy development period. A Disney spokesperson said in a statement to Hollywood Reporter, still years from release, Snow White will have cultural consultants just like other live action films such as Aladdin and Mulan. The film has been, been in development for three years. The studio has been reimagining the dwarf characters since the earliest stages. Yeah, we wouldn't want uh, stereotypes of mythical creatures. Perhaps next we can get a campaign to end the stigma surrounding vampires and werewolves. So to review, in the new Snow White and the Seven Dwarves, Snow White will no longer be Snow White, and the dwarves will no longer be dwarves. Nothing can be what it was before. All that existed in the past is now offensive simply because it existed in the past. Fairy tales especially must be abolished and rewritten, as Disney has set out to do, and this is why they're doing it. Well, the first reason they're doing it is for the money. The second is this. Because fairy tales cannot be allowed to continue existing. Fairy tales commit the aforementioned sin of being very old, and that's no good. Also, fairy tales deal with universal themes. And universal themes are problematic because they don't cater specifically enough to the particular concerns of individual victim groups. And fairy tales always revolve around a conflict of good versus evil. But that's also offensive because the categories of good and evil require moral judgment. And moral judgment is no longer allowed. Moreover, and the big, biggest thing of all, is that fairy tales quite often feature a romance which is based in traditional notions of chivalry and gender roles. Obviously, we can't have any of that. Those are the defining elements of fairy tales, and very often the defining elements of stories in general. That's why we have to move past it. It's time we move past storytelling altogether. Abolish all films and television shows and burn all books. We can spend our time sitting in silence, staring at blank, blank screens and empty pages. It's the only way to ensure that nobody is ever offended. But in the meantime, we have to say to Peter Dinklage that he is, of course, today canceled. Listen, hit that subscribe button right now. Do it right now. I thank you for your compliance. It is somewhat appreciated.